Hello buddy Crow back again and welcome to part 6 of this playthrough of Leisure Suit Larry Goes Looking for Love in Several Wrong Places. In the last part, we found a bomb in the airport and although it went off as we were trying to remove it from the airport, it did clear up the long lines. We boarded an airplane and the only remaining seat happened to be next to the joking bar guy from Leisure Suit Larry in the Land of Lounge Lizards and he proceeded to scalp us. In an attempt to escape the plane, we forgot to wear our parachute and plummeted to our death. And now we resume through a restore save where we remembered to wear our parachute as we escaped the plane. And we actually get wafted gently to the island. So we've made it to another location. Let's look around. Wow, now you're really out on a limb. The ground is far below you, and you're stuck in a parachute you bought from the vending machine. <laughs> so let's uh, cut. We can say cut rope, right? Yeah, good idea. So that's what we needed that knife for, to save ourselves. You saw a way at the parachute harness with the dull cheese knife, eventually turning it to a mere thread, supporting your entire body weight. Suddenly, look down and consider the consequences of falling to the jungle floor from this height. But you don't consider it for long. And boom! Ow! Oh, our knees shattered! Ung! Oh. And surprisingly, this does not kill us. This has to happen. It's like, isn't it funny how sometimes things happen uh, that sh would normally kill you that just don't for plot convenience reasons. A fall like that would be enough to break the average man's onclunk. Careful examination of uh, years reveals severe damage. The delicate instrument was smashed by the fall. You discard it here without learning of its dangerous cargo nor realizing that you would have inadvertently kept the world's most valuable secret from falling into enemy hands. So we don't have the onclunk anymore. We inadvertently destroyed it. Uh, let's look. There's like a jungle in here. Could that be because you're standing in the middle of the ju uh, jungle on a tropical island? The ground here is unusually spongy. Uh, let's look at the ground. The jungle floor. Blah, blah, blah. Uh, there is a stout stick lying under the tree. You feel fortunate you did not land on it. So let's take the stick. Okay, and um, let's save. We're in the jungle. Welcome to the jungle. There's the plenty of deaths here. Plenty of deaths here. There's at least one death per screen for quite a while, I think. <laughs> uh, replace with jungle. And uh, let's just go through these bushes here. Whoops! You just brushed a bush containing rusting swarm of killer bees. You are frozen in fear. Could the rumors of their incredible strength really be true? Bye-bye, Larry. Yep. Perhaps you'll enjoy your new life as the Queen Bee's personal love slave. Nah, no way. <laughs> so right off the bat, in the jungle, there's a way to die. So there is a way through this, though. We have to crawl. But first, move a little closer to the bush. Okay, now crawl. Good idea. Okay, crawl. Okay, you carefully lower yourself uh, to the slimy ground and attempt to make your way past the dangerous swarm of killer bees. All right, we made it past the bees. Successfully avoided the killer bees. And uh, we can go off to the next screen here. Um, nope, not that way, apparently. Is it down? Do we just go down? Yep. Okay. Here's another screen full of peril. Well, one perilous thing. Let's look. The jungle is dense and dark. High above you, monkeys dance through the tree traps. Let's save our next uh, jungle ad adventure here. And... Uh, you just attracted the attention of a giant, uh, that giant anaconda by walking beneath its waiting coils. Uh, perhaps if you hold very still, he won't notice you. Okay, we'll do that. We'll just hold still. Maybe he just doesn't see us. Okay, so he did notice you. Perhaps he 
He just finished a big meal and couldn't eat another bite. Uh, and, you know, he's really paying attention to us. He's yelling at us, and he has just eaten us. I think we're still fine, though. I think we're still fine. Uh, then again, perhaps he relishes the, the taste of polyester. Burp. Oh, wait, no. It sounds like we're being digested. Uh, you feel you could have eventually escaped his coils if there was only some way to keep him from swallowing you. Okay, uh, yeah, that's not the way to do it, but this is uh, the way to do it. So now you just tech. okay, same thing. Uh, here he comes. He's, uh, okay, did notice you. Okay, so we could actually, at this point, use stick on steak. You have to wait for the animation to start, and then you stick on steak. Uh, you carefully prepare yourself for the oncoming jaws with the stick. Will it work? As the snake dislocates its lower jaw in preparation for another hearty, cholesterol-laden dinner of red meat and polyester, you carefully insert your stick into the distended opening. Ah, there we go. The snake, unable to remove the stick from its jaws and embarrassed by being humiliated before the other jungle creatures, slithers away through the undergrowth to its lair and an early retirement. So we have thwarted the snake. Let's do it a little bit faster there. Bye bye, snake. And we're off to the next screen. And uh, there's a little monkey walking that way. So the jungle floor here is soft and sticky here. You fondly recall your first car seat covers. Uh, say, back to the jungle. Okay. So let's look at the ground. The ground here has a strange pattern to it. Oh, let's just walk. Oh, at least this quick stand is nice and soft. So we just died in quicksand. Once again, you're over your head here, Larry. In the future, you must be more observant. <laughs> okay. okay, so we're here, and we need to slow this down a bit. Because if you see there's some lighter marks on the ground here, that's the path we need to take in order not to get swallowed by the quicksand. And even in some cases, I have still gotten swallowed by the quicksand by being like a pixel off. This is, really isn't too difficult. I've made it more often than not, though. And that little, oh, crap, at the end, at the very end of it. Let's try again. Oh, well, we're doing a little faster. Let's try a little bit faster. Maybe we can do it this fast. Yeah, if you, if, like I thought it was clean and clear there. The little monkey or whatever is like your clue as to how to do this. Yeah, I went just a little bit too far down. And it went better when I went faster. Okay. Save. Next screen here. Just trying to make it screen at a time. Let's look. The quiet brook babbles nearby. Vines hang from the jungle canopy, which uh, thins as it reaches the beach just visible ahead. Well, let's just cross this river. You feel a tickling sensation around your toys. Boy, this adventuring life sure is fun. Let's, yeah, we can just cross the water here. It's, this seems like a safe place to climb out. Oh, wait a minute. Uh-oh. What? What the hell's going on here? We're just the skeleton legs. <laughs> oh, gee, those piranha work, really work fast. <laughs> For some reason, your heart just isn't in the game anymore. Not to mention several other organs. That's that's actually a pretty funny reveal there. Okay, we actually need to swing from the vines here. And I'm going to slow the game down. And let's see if we can grab the vine from here. Okay. And, oh! Nope. Um, you actually have to grab each vine individually. We know what's going to happen there. So let's try this again. Uh, slow the game down. Oops. Grab vine. And luckily we could just hit spacebar and grab the next vine. Okay, we made it! You knew all along you were a swinger. So actually there's one other thing we need here. That's uh, this look at the vine. Many vines. One in particular attracts your eye. Although it's been a, per a, a pure story, it has been weakened by 
near its top by excess wing. And the funny thing is, though, like, if you didn't know which vine it was, you'd be like, what the hell vine? You'd, you'd be like, what the... And you'd be driving crazy. I was trying over by the tree or whatever, but it's actually the vine I'm standing directly under right now. So let's take the vine. You reach up, grasp the vine firmly, and give it a, a sharp jerk, yanking it from the tree branch above you. You carefully coil it up and insert it into your left front pants pocket. Okay, and we're going to save the game here. All right, next screen. Let's speed it up a little bit. Look at this. There's somebody in the jungle. Larry, look. Out in the surf, that beautiful native girl is waving at you, and she's topless. Gee, you think to yourself, I thought girls like that only existed in National Geographic. It's love at first sight. Also, second sight. Nice EGA graphics, sir. You think, this is the girl I've dreamed of. The woman I've longed for. The moment I've waited for. Is this the love I've been looking for? This really isn't the same lady that she dreamed of in that earlier sequence when he was getting on the boat. Or on the boat. But close enough. Whatever. Oh, they're in love. And Cupid's shooting them both, rapid fire. They're in love. Is this the end of the game? Certainly not. Oh, fireworks, how convenient. What a coincidence. Either that's their, their imaginations. Well, Larry, are you just going to stand there? You finally met the girl of your dreams. Now's the time to take some action. <laughs> I like how she lifts him up a bit. <laughs> You're limp. You've never been kissed like that before. Could it be? Is Leisure Suit Larry in love? I thought we were in love in the last game. Again? Oh, I, okay. Again. <laughs> you recover enough to speak. Oh my gosh, you're beautiful. You're wonderful. Do you understand English? What's your name? Where are you from? Are you busy tonight? Of course I understand English, you silly. All of us here on Nantunit Island do. We live in a small village just off the beach. My name is Kalalo. What's yours? I might be pronouncing your name wrong, Kalalo, or whatever. My name is Larry, Larry Laffron. I might be pronouncing her name differently every time I say it, too. Of course, it only stands to reason that such a lovely man would also have such a lovely name. Kalalo, Kalalo's smile beams melting your heart, but as your question concerning my availability tonight, I am afraid I have disappointing information for you. As enjoyable as I uh, feel sure an evening with someone like you must be, customs here, customs here on the island forbid premarital dating. On Nantunet Island, all women save themselves from marriage. Well, that's okay, you volunteer. Why don't we just get married instead? She smiles in agreement. Wouldn't that be wonderful? But unfortunately, our tribal elders have forgotten any new marriages until our island has been freed from its present scourge. Please permit me to eludicate. 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 I, I don't really know how to pronounce that word. Recently, an ab abhorrent man took our island from us. He claimed to be our sacred ancestral burial grounds. Uh... He claimed, oh, he claimed our secret ancestral burial grounds at the top of a volca volcano and refuses to allow us to visit. She continues, soon thereafter, our perpetuity blue skies turned to f our perpetual blue skies turned to fog. While none of us have ever seen snow or ice, suddenly a glacier appeared on the slopes of the volcano, preventing our passage to our sacred lands. A treacherous river then appeared, gouging a formidable canyon just behind their village. Then, most odious of all, he hypnotized our most beautiful women, enslaving them in his mountain-type fortress, forcing them to do his every whim, no matter how sick or repulsive. What a drag you symp sympathize. Yes, she agrees, but now the worst of all, be but now the worst of all, because of all of this, he prevented my people from compl uh, comp completing a mega bulk deal with a large multinational hotel conglomerate who were prepared to turn this place into next year's trendiest tourist trap. We had it bagged. They were going to build a huge casino, resort, hotel complex right here on this lagoon, provide employment for all our lazy men in the growing field of slot machine repair, and even fund a daycare center. So even though we women would continue to work our normal 16-hour days in the tar taro patches, at least we wouldn't have to carry our children on our backs. 
but it, it, did it happen? Hell no! All because the evil Dr. Nonuki, she cries, suddenly turning quite sensitive. Oh, if only some great hero could rid this island of his evilness, we could all live here happily ever after. You're no fool, Larry. That sounds like a cue. Say, I've got an idea, you tell her. What if I stop this guy? Then we could get married. But of course, why didn't I think of that? <laughs> this is every little girl's fairy tale. A hero comes in a white suit to save my island and its people. Sigh. Okay, that's a lot of words. Come on, Larry, let's go. And there's lots more to come. And, um, yeah. So if you remember from the intro to the game, there was uh, Dr. No Nookie on this island. We're finally at that island. Attention, please, cries Kalelo. Gather all the villagers before Chief's Hut. We must have a celebration. Wait here while I tell everyone, says the basket carrier. Wow. I've been talking and talking about this game for like four hours. I've been playing this game for like four hours. Oh, Larry, I hope you'll be able to convince my father, the chief. Uh, my father, the chief, that we should get married, says Kalelo. Sometimes daddy can have a strange sense of humor. Don't worry, baby, you reassure. Uh, for you, I would cross the burning sands of the Sahara. I would climb the highest peaks of the Himalayas. I would swim the shark-infested waters of the ocean. Why, well, I'd even learn desktop publishing software. <laughs> My hero. Come on, let's go meet Daddy. I thought we were waiting for him to come there, but... Nope. Nope. Not that. All of the village is gathered for this profound occasion. You and your beloved stride across you and your beloved stride across the compound to await the arrival of the chef. Or the chief, not the chef. The chief. <laughs> oh daddy shouts Kalelo, please come out. There's someone here I would like you to meet. And I uh, thought they were getting him. <laughs> I like how he's got his Hawaiian shirt. Uh, Father, this is Larry. Larry Laffer, says Kalelu. We are in love and wish to marry. So, you want to marry my daughter, says Chief Kinawawao, staring straight to the back of your skull. No one is worthy of her hand unless he can prove himself a real man. Oh, I'll do anything for the woman I love, sir, you tell him. No sacrifice is too great. So be it, he says softly. Then in a more commanding tone, enter the sacrificial halt and hut and bring forth the sacred PC. Villagers go, ooh. Oh, I wonder if there's a soundtrack available for this game. <laughs> I like how they bring in the PC. And it's bicycle. Po Young man, sit before the mighty PC. Pro pro prove your manhood by becoming its master, and you will pass part one of its initiation to our tribe. So all these guys are computer programmers, I guess. Uh, but what is it I'm supposed to do, you ask? Write a short program, he commands. Any subject or topic, any length. No problem, you think. Any good adventurer could do that. As long as it's an assembly language, she smiles, confident in the, in the certainty of your failure. I actually took assembly in uh, college, and it is quite impossible unless I've got a little book to uh, look up the codes and stuff. With your heart you, it, with your heart in your throat, you approach your sacred relic. Is, is it least significant bite first, you wonder? Okay, so now I get to stop talking for a little while. While the guy... Um, you know, powers the PC, and we get to see the code he's moving, which I believe is genuine assembly code. It looks familiar at any rate. <laughs> I haven't I haven't done anything in assembly since I was in college, which was, oh crap, a long time ago. 15, 16, 17 years ago? Wow, I'm that old. Okay, all ready for quality assurance, you announce. What did you write? Ask Chief Kinuawa. A complete multitasking, multi user operating system that only reigns on 8088 CPUs respond. Excellent! And do you have a name for this product? asked Chief Kinuawa. 
Why, Unix, of course. We need a rim shot there. <laughs> Perfect, says Chief Kinawawa. I'll tighten up your code later. Now follow me, and I'll lead you to the secret path. Though... The way known, the way known only to card-carrying villagers. The path that will lead you to the sacred burial grounds of our ancestors. The one and only way to the top of Nantunit Volcano. Right, rid this island. Not right, this island. Rid this island of the evil Doctor Nonuki, and Kalela will be your wife. Villagers go ah. And he's walking kind of slow. Let's speed him up a bit. Please walk this way. I thought I was going to do uh, if I could walk this way kind of joke. Guess not, though. The old boy's got some sense of balance. Yeah, he's really on the edge of that cliff there. Here we go, son, says Chief Kinawawa. This is the secret of my people. The way to our sacred volcano right across this chasm. Some secret. Any fool could see that. Kinawawa continues. Of course, any fool could see that. That's what's a... Uh, what's important is you must cross this chasm, climb the recent icy glacier, walk the treacherous pass, and penetrate the impenetrable fortress of the evil Dr. Nonuki. By the way, did I mention my daughter's a virgin? Whoa, we get some points for n learning that information. Okay, catch you later, he says. I must go lead the, village aer after, uh, the village's afternoon aerobics class. May the force be with you. And thus begins the last and final stretch of our adventure. Okay, we're walking kind of fast. Let's save. Um, I'm going to say that this is the final uh, adventure. Final, you know, final adventure. Because I already know it is. And what's interesting is um, you could just walk right off. Ah! Oh, shit! Treacherous little first step, isn't it? <laughs> okay, enough of that. Um, we actually can look around. Let's look. The chief's hut is grand, but only in comparison to the other huts. In the background, you can hear the strains of old Olivia Newton-John tapes. Let's look at the huts. Okay, it's the same thing. I wonder if... Um, we get a different message on this screen. Oh, they were cooking that barbecued iguana. Um, look at the huts. No, I guess not. Actually, we could take uh, the ashes here. You bend over the fire pit and scoop up a huge handfuls of ash, completely filling all of your pockets with them. We'll save some room because there's something else I'm going to grab. If, do we get points for... Let's see here. Take sand. You bend over, scoop up large handfuls of beach sand to put in your pockets. At least, your at last, your pants are bulging. Um, now, you could have either taken the ashes or the sand and used them for the same thing later. But I think you get more points for taking both. And I'll have to make a choice on whether or not I want to use the ashes or the sand later. It won't make a difference, but... Um, Look at the huts. This must be the witch doctor's hut. A native man chops wood near the hut. So in your back of your mind, you're thinking, oh, you know what? I could probably use that axe. Let's open the door. It better if you stayed out. Okay. I'm going to save. And um, try and get this guy's axe. Hey, let's talk to the man. Grunt. Not very talkative, this one. Okay, take X. Le it's his axe. Leave it alone. No, I want his axe. I'm going to go get his axe. Ow! You scream in anguish as the woodchopper misses the log and removes your foot. Next time, better leave this guy alone. <laughs> yeah, um, it's kind of a red herring. You don't need anything from this guy. Uh, but he can chop your ax your foot off with the axe. You don't need his axe. I, for the longest time, I thought I needed the axe. Look at the huts. The huts are filled with the joy of aerobics. Don't disturb them. Okay. I think that was the message I was looking for. And um, I think we have everything we need, we need to uh, finish this adventure up. A rank is a dork. Excuse me, almost got 500 points. We're at 423 of 500. Honestly, I don't know if I've missed any points anywhere. 
Okay. We gotta get close, but not too close. Uh, use vine. This is where we need that vine. If you didn't pick up that vine, or didn't know, I really had to look this up in the hint book in order to know that I needed that vine. And we got it. We got it. Okay. Sometimes you can miss. You made it. And there goes the vine and the branch. You set forth on your mission uh, to explore the unknown mountain before you, knowing full well that you will never be able to return this way again. What lies before you? Will you be able to climb the icy glacier? Will you find the evil doctor's mountaintop fortress? Will you destroy the evil doctor Nonuki? Will you return to your beloved Kalela? Will you find love? Will you find happiness? Will you stop asking me these questions and get on with the game? <laughs> All right, looks like we're going to have to end this episode now. I know it was a bit shorter than usual, but I couldn't really combine this part and the next part without being longer than I would have liked, so I decided to end it here, where Larry's just starting his adventure to stop the evil Nonuki and rescue all the people on the island so he could marry Kalelo. Will he succeed? We'll have to find out next time in the final part. See you then.